Let's demo this wall down. Obviously, just use a nice little sawzall to take this sucker out. Everyone's stair railings are probably a bit different. Not really worth me giving you exact dimensions of what mine were, other than it was very useful to actually take off all of this drywall on this side so you have access to the framing because you're going to need to be able to support that metal railing. Yeah, it's a big metal railing. It weighs a lot needs that extra support so you'll see here in a bit after i get this off i'm gonna do a cross member up connecting all of those frames to give me the support needed fix the null post thank goodness there's not that much drywall because while mudding i still have yet to figure out that less is more uh, so if you look right behind that 2x4, the stringer is what I matched the angle to. And you didn't see it, but I had actually notched down those uh, studs just a little bit. So then I can place this 2x4 on top and match that elevation. That's what was kind of my, my go-to uh, point of reference. And that's what I was able to follow as well. So that's what gave me the support underneath to support that 1x6, which, as you can tell, is already primed. And I am all for shortcuts here. So spending the extra buck or two to get something already primed and to save a step is well worth the money to me. Here's another time saver. Yes, I'm kind of nerding out here just a little bit. Yeah, I'm an engineer, but I want to show you that if you get the exact angle and and cut it just right, then you don't have to put any extra trim or extra um, stuff up there to cover up the gaps in between the drywall and that overhung ledge, I will call it. You'll see me jumping back and forth between mudding, painting, and all that, and that's because... Yes, I did this all in... No, I'm just kidding. I did not do this all in one night, but I just wanted to show you that I tried to do it effectively so that while something was drying, I was able to paint the other part and vice versa. That is a shot of my trim layout. I do that because, first of all, my saw is in my garage, and so the less trips I have to make back and forth, the better. But my advice to you is to make a couple cuts because there's nothing worse than with trim cutting it a little too short and then having to scrap that entire piece even though i made those measurements i did have to go make a couple cuts to get the perfect fit we're finally to the railing part um i'd actually been making it the last couple nights in the garage so i'm gonna cut the video over to those segments so then you can see how i put it all together For the 10 of you that are longtime subscribers, well, here's to you. Yes, uh, those of you that are new to my channel, I've actually put out a lot of welding videos, and so this is my comfort zone right here, as you will. Yes, I did become a carpenter recently, and, well, heck, decided to finally throw out a project that uh, puts both these skills together. So even though I have a bunch of these tools like a little drill press and welders and stuff like that, you don't need to go all crazy and buy all this stuff to work with metal. I started out with a simple hand drill. My advice though is to get a nice set of drill bits. It really is a night and day difference drilling through metal with my Harbor Freight uh, drill bit set and my Milwaukee drill bit set. Here is a shout out to my Harbor Freight Titanium 125 welder. It is one of the cheapest welders on the market and I did almost every weld with it um, and they turned out just great. There's proof that you don't need to go spend a lot of money to get a nice MIG welder. Um, the cheap one will do just fine for this little project. Unless you really enjoy it, then you might want to step up your game a bit, pick up a MIG welder, and then you'll really start having fun. Just don't forget though, when you're working with metal, when you buy it, it comes with some oily film on it. That's to protect it. So you, you throw down some acetone on it, it takes all that away, and then you're ready to paint. 
Uh, yeah, I just used a cheap rattle can spray paint to get that nice shiny finish. I put about two or three coats on that, and that's just because, uh, well, I got four kids, and so wouldn't even hurt to throw down one or two more. I'm putting up the railing just so then I can pre-drill my holes. I am using 5 16 uh, lag screws, and that is more than sufficient enough to um, strength to hold this railing up, especially when I've got four vertical up and down, and then I've got the two little mounting pads. You just got to make sure that they are long enough to go through the metal and through the drywall, so then you can anchor it into those uh, 2x4 studs. I didn't want to go too crazy expensive on that top railing, so I went pretty much as cheap as you could with a 1x3 pine board. And so here is a quick shot of this side before we move on over to the other side. As I had just mentioned, both sides were very similar. You saw the 2x4 right there. That is what is holding up and supporting the 1x6, thus ultimately giving you that strength you need to hold the metal railing. And you know what? When you paint a little, why not paint that whole wall, right? Yeah. Well, I'm just going to end on a quick uh, shot right here of putting up the second railing done with those same lag screws uh, going all the way through that 1x6 and into that stud to give you that nice firm support that's needed so the kids can write it all the way down if they want to. Well, the railing is finally done. Eh, kind of not really. Just a couple other little touches. Uh, we're actually going to be trying to pick a stain for this railing. We want to match something similar to the floors. Uh, we're going to be doing the carpet here in a bigger remodel here coming up in a couple months. But some of the details that I may not have mentioned in the video are, for example, like I used um, one by three for the top railing, a eight inch one by two uh, flat bar. These are three quarter inch square tubing. 2 inch square tubing on the big post. This is just a 3 16 inch plate, uh, the lag screws, uh, 5 16 I think I mentioned that. We got your, um, what is it, your lovely uh, 1 by 6 uh, plate here. Same, everything's the same over here except for just a couple little minor things like I added this center post. You need a post, I can't remember, it's like every three and a half feet, something like that for code. Uh, and you'll notice, let's just take a peek up underneath here, so if we can get up underneath there. I had to add an extra little cross member just because this top um, one by, uh, not one by, eighth by two flat bar, it, it wasn't quite as stiff as I wanted it to be for the railing. So couple small little differences overall uh, not too many pieces just a lot of cutting welding grinding painting all that fun stuff and last but not least guys you might be thinking to yourself hey uh, you kind of miss some stuff yes I did and that's because as I demoed the other side I realized that there's actually a lot of space on the other side of well, sorry, when I was demoing the other side, I realized there's a lot of space underneath the stairs. And hey, living in a 1400 square foot home with four kids, we'll take any square inch possible. So preview for my next video, we're going to be adding a bunch of storage underneath here. And that's when I'll be taking that uh, drywall off, finishing up the trim and making it look pretty again. So thanks for watching guys. See you next time.